Hey, quit eating that. Dude, but it's water-based. Hey everybody, we're here for some pro tips and tricks to get the best traction, whether you're just climbing gnarly trails or you want to do a little hard enduro. If you start using mooses and you start using really soft tires, you don't want to be relying on one rim lock or you may be walking home. We've already taken the tire off and the tube off and we hope you can get that far. If you can't, that's why they make Sawzalls. That recommendation comes from Matt Spears. So what we got going on here is we've already have the rim lock right here and we replaced the OEM one with the Motion Pro light lock. I know people say they like them because they're light. I don't know if that makes any difference. I like them because they're blue and that probably really doesn't matter. Just like sexy doesn't matter apparently. But it does have a really cool nut that's large and then also it has this cool washer that conforms around the radius of the inside of the rim. So I think that's kind of sweet. So that's why we put it on. So this rim lock is a 2.15. It is in the original rim lock hole. Next to it, you have where the air valve from your inner tube went. So now what we're gonna do to add an additional rim lock is to go to the opposite side of the wheel. So if you take it and you flip it around and you go to the exact opposite side, you're gonna see here there's a couple spaces. Directly across, there's really not a space. These spokes come together or they're parallel. So there's, as you can see, there's two spaces that are equidistant. You can see down here, one is here, one is here. And you can see you have that additional space so you can fit that nut and it's a good place for it to live. So it's either offset to the left or right. I'm gonna to choose to go to the one on my right, which is this one. And then you can see it's not exactly straight across, right? So now we're gonna show you, I like to measure these. You can kind of raw dog it and take a drill and go at it. But because this is concave and it's hard aluminum, the drill likes to skive. So I like to, I like to measure it mark it, punch it, start it with a pre-drill, and then make it happen. So we're gonna measure across from these nipples. And I don't know what your nipples measure, but my nipples measure 25 millimeters across. So rough math, it's about 12.5 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do, I just like to make a little mark, which I've kind of already made one. I'm going crosswise. There we go, 12.5 millimeters. You can see I already got a little hole there because I set it. You can get this guy from Harbor Freight or wherever, I don't know, they're like seven bucks. It's a self-loaded and you press it on the mark, spring-loaded, gives you a nice pilot so your drill doesn't skive. Do it a couple times. Now we're gonna pre-drill. So hopefully, stays in the same hole. Keep them perpendicular. Now we got that started, we're gonna switch over. This is a 21 64th drill, or approximately nine millimeters. All right, so we're gonna finish it off with this bad boy. Now that we got a nice clean hole, we'll drop this rim lock in. Guy goes in nice and flashy, look at that. Fits pretty well. This is this concave washer that's really cool. That's the real reason why I like it, not that it's blue. But it's nice because I think it gets it tied to the rim and it doesn't try to flatten out the rim or, or dent the rim. It is aluminum and you know, if you're strong enough, Seems like you can bend anything. So there you have it. We have 
opposing rim locks. One here, one there. I have even heard of someone using three rim locks. Who was that? I don't know, he's pretty important. That reminds me of a guy I know who has three nuts. But that's a different story. So now we're gonna do, this is pretty cool. This is uh, something I learned a while ago. How to put a valve to, once you even know you're not using a tube, if you want to blow out the bead and you want to give it a big shot of air, you can basically take a valve stem, either from an old tube, take the stem out, and then use a full air chuck that just pumps it, and you'll get a big pop. It'll help seat the tire on the rim. Just give a little, little, uh, little more peace of mind. Really great for when you have a stubborn tire that doesn't want to be on the, on the bead. I do not like going into a race or a long ride starting out when you know the tire isn't on the bead. And I know some of you guys have done this, have done that. It's not a great feeling. Um, so we're gonna show you something that can make sure you always get it on the bead. Here we go. This is gonna be your uh, arts and crafts. Um, take an old tube or one of your friend's new tubes, whatever, but we don't use many. So basically all I'm gonna do is I just want the valve stem there, you can give your dog, or just, I just throw this in your local river or waterway. Um, people think it's a baby seal. So take this, I kind of trim it so it's gonna sit right in the center of the rim. I wasn't very good at arts and crafts. I was kind of a special needs kid. You weren't allowed to use scissors. No, it wasn't so much that I'd stab myself in the eye, but I like stabbing the other kids. I just like to hear the way they scream. So what we got here, now you have your valve stem. Um, I like to just use the rubber part. And another reason we do this is not only to seat the bead, it gives you that big pop. And believe it or not, even, even with the mooses in, I've had tires hold air for a stupid amount of time. Um, that just shows you how well it locks. The other reason I like to do this is when you put this in, and I like to use these, you can get these uh, online, Rocky Mountain ATV or wherever. It's just a rubber mud grommet. And I like to put this on because A, it helps keep the air in, and more importantly, maybe down the road, it keeps all the sand and grime and all that kind of crap that gets into your into your tire if you, just, if you just leave that hole open or you have it taped. So having this kind of mud grommet on there keeps all the sand, a lot of the sand and debris out, which that is not the friend of your moose and these mooses are fairly expensive. So I get a lot of questions on how long a moose lives. And quite honestly, it depends how well you take care of it. Just like a goldfish, you don't feed it, Next thing you know, it's taking a trip down the old toilet bowl. I mean, come on, take care of your fish. Um, so that is one way. This is the arts and crafts this way. Is the DIY. Yeah, works. it works well. I've been doing it for a long time. I found another way to do it that's just a little more factory. I don't know that it's any better. Uh, this way has worked just fine. I'll also, you can also take the rim strip that comes with it you can put that back on, that'll help uh, protect your moose. Or I like to do two rounds of, you take black or any color Gorilla Tape and you go the width of this inner saddle and take two laps, two laps with the, uh, with the Gorilla Tape. So now we're gonna show you the other way. All right, so now we're gonna go with the more factory. You probably get this from your dealer. It's from Firepower. It's these funky little stems. I just saw it and said, hey man, I think that'll work looked at it. I've used a couple of them. They work pretty sweet. Um, we are not sponsored by Firepower, but hey, Firepower, if you want to give us a lot of money because we use so many of these, we'd start bids at say 50K. So if you're out there, Firepower, this is for you. I don't even know who Firepower is. I like Firepower. I like them now. This is pretty cool. So what they've done, I don't know what this thing is for, but it's definitely, I think it's for this purpose. So, comes with these little grommets on it. And you gotta separate these. So it's pretty cool. So, this one goes like this. 
this one goes like this. Then you have this guy, little washer, little nut. I think you can get it from there. You basically tighten that and then, hey, it even comes with a flashy chrome-ish valve cover. And all your friends go, geez, are you sure you have a moose? Why do you have an air stem? And you just say, hey, I got an air stem because I'm cool. That's all that matters. So pretty much that's it. Now we have a rim that has two rim locks. We have the valve that goes to nowhere because there's not a tube, but this will do an awesome job in setting the bead and popping out your tire. It'll also keep debris and crap from getting into that hole. You're pretty much ready to go. The next video we're gonna do, we'll do an addition to this, or it'll be a part of this video, is we're gonna actually mount, and I know they're out there, but man, I get so many questions, how to mount a moose and then how to more easily mount a moose when you got two rim locks because it kind of does add a little uh, complexity to the equation. Other than that, everybody, this thing is about ready to get put into some hard use. We're gonna continue on with this moose tire setup. We have a Michelin Enduro Extreme in the 140 80, 18. One thing I wanted to show when we're doing the moose lube, what we use a ton of, it's cheap and you can use lots of it, Murphy's Tire and Tube Mounting Compound. Good stuff, you can use all you want. So typically I already had this moose in the tire and I decided to pull it out so we could video and show you guys because we've had a lot of questions. So I just want to give you an idea. You stick your hand in the lube, you want to take your hand, go all the way around, apply it liberally all the way on the sidewall, trying to keep it off of the bead right here, trying to keep it all on the inside. Do both walls, get the opposite wall, work it all the way around and almost just like squeegee it all the way around and then take the center. And I usually put it basically on top of my knuckles, take it, squeegee it all the way around. So you make sure you have all the inside surface of the tire. If you go and try to lube up the big alligator and try and stuff it in, the bead pretty much squeegees off a lot of your lube. So it makes it kind of a mess. Like I said, we already had the moose in here and I decided to pull it out so we could show you this. So let's grab the moose and kind of show you how we stick this guy in here. Like I said, the moose already has a lot of Murphys on it. You can see we've drilled it for extreme traction with our moose drill, which you can get on our website at insideenduro.com. Obviously, a lot of you guys know this, because a lot of you guys have this drill. So basically, pretty simple. I like to grab it, put pressure to open up the bead on the bottom of the tire, so you can put your knee on it. Basically, just start feeding it in. And this is a lot more messy because I've already got lube on this moose, which usually I'd be putting in a dry moose and it wouldn't be squeegeeing off the side, but hey, we thought it was important to get this video out instead of waiting for the next one. There we go, she's all in. And you can see you got this compound all over the bead and that's because I this moose already had lube on it, but we'll clean this bead up and it'll be, it'll be all right. So since we had a little extra because we had already had this thing lubed up, I'm gonna clean the outer bead, flip her over. We'll get this side. Now she's ready to mount. Little trick I like to do since we keep the bead pretty much clean of the moose because we want a solid lock on that bead, use glass cleaner, it's ammonia free, so they used alcohol. So it'll give you some lube and then it'll dry up and you'll get a nice seal and you'll get a nice firm uh, contact with your rim. Also, you wanna make sure on your rims, if it's not a new rim that you've cleaned 
the inside where the bead lays on the rim. You wanna clean this, make sure. Sometimes you get mud cooked on, rubber cooked on, and that will keep your bead from getting a really good seal on that rim. So make sure your wings on the inside of your rim are clean. And then I'm gonna give this a shot. And this will just help with the process. One of the main reasons we're doing this video is this setup, as you saw us do before, has two rim locks. So it's a little bit different with mounting a moose. So this is a brand new moose with a brand new tire. So it could be challenging. Let's see how hard it really is. All right, so first off, we got our first rim lock we have to deal with since we have two. I stick that bead right underneath the bottom. I hold it with my knee. As you can see my foot, these are the secret little tricks. Me holding the stand with my foot keeps the whole stand from going when I've got my knee across it. So I'll set in my first tire iron, put in my second tire iron, bring them over, and then I will rotate this tire and get it locked underneath the Rabicon if you have one, or they make some copies out there as well. So from this point, since I've got that locked in, I'm gonna work this across to the next bead. Some I once saw in a video, if you're sweating, you're working too hard, or you're doing something wrong. So we haven't started sweating yet. Let off a little pressure so you can get this one in. Bring it over, hold it, let this pressure off just a little bit, and that'll enable you to get the bite on the next one. Don't take too big of bites. Sometimes we get a little ambitious. Again, I'm gonna let up so I can squeeze this next one in. All right, now we're gonna have to flip her over to take care of this opposite rim lock. So now we've got the other side in. This is locked underneath the rim lock right here, what you want. Now this pesky little guy is sitting right here. So for the second rim lock, since we have a brand new rim lock that has a brand new foam, it wants to set the rim lock out, which makes it tough to get this over. When you have a foam, this came from Matt Dewar. He said, hey man, why don't you tighten up the rim lock a bit and see if it sucks it up, and it did. So that's an additional good tip if you've got a brand new one of these and it's sticking out. Just you're gonna have to remember to loosen it up after you get the thing over. So now that, and then also when you tighten it up, make sure you don't catch the lip of the bead. You're, you'll never get the thing on there. Again, I'll use a little bit of lube because I need to get this bead to slide over. So I'll give it a little bit of shot. This stuff will evaporate. So now we're gonna, again, we're gonna set in one on each side. Step on the stand. I'm gonna start bringing that thing up. And then here, you're gonna to have to loosen this guy since if you did tighten it so that we can push it in. And what I'll do is I'll take one of these guys out and then I'll Press, I'll use a sprocket, press it in. There we got it. Now we'll flip it over. Make sure it's pushed all the way on and we'll finish her up. Check underneath both sides, make sure they're still locked. So, all right, we have both rim locks are seated on the bottom side of the tire. We've flipped it over. Again, I'm using a little more glass cleaner. This is just Costco cheap stuff. Lube this guy up. And I like to start, I like to leave one rim lock here, just off of the press. The other one out here, that's up to you. So I guess that would be basically 10 o'clock and say four o'clock. Again, I'll use the curve come into the rim, we'll set the first one. And for the Ramacondas or the knockoffs, they usually have a holder here. Or uh, if you don't have one, get a friend. 
So this next one, next one, and then I'll use a fourth one on this. Get this guy in. So again, we've got a pretty full moose. So it's starting to kick up, it's starting to kick up on the other side. So we'll just press, use my knee and we'll press this down. We'll come in, we'll get this guy over. And then again, a nice little technique. You can use the curve, you can use the disc, get it on edge. There we are. Need to make sure this thing sucks in. This is why God gave us two legs and two arms for doing moose drills. Moose installs. All right, probably one of the most important part of the maneuver is once you start getting this tire to this point, this is where uh, people usually lose their sanity on a moose uh, install. You need to press down and get this, they call it dead center, to bring the bead into dead center. So I'm taking the bead off of the rim and that'll just give enough, just a little release over on the other side to get the hoop over without breaking the bead. So again, you do little hits, you let up a little bit, and then you grab some space, you let up a little bit, grab some space, let up a little bit. Everything's wet and slippery, just the way we like it. Cool. So at this point, it'll usually hold. I like to rotate the last rim lock to the press. And again, we use this technique, push this rim lock in. Ooh, she's tight. Brand new tire, brand new moose. We'll clean this up. What I really like to do is inspect the bead. And if you look around the tire, you can see there's this line, it's about three eighths of an inch. Even, 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 even. Here it's not. So it's not on the bead. Right here to here. Now, some tires just don't like to be on the bead. Uh, the meatest tires like to be on the bead. These actual, these Michelin extremes like to pretty much. Uh, one thing you can do if you're in the field and you don't have air is I'll take the side that's not there, give it a couple big bounces. I said like these extremes, they actually like to live on the bead. And if you made it clean, So she's coming out pretty slow, but you know what? I'm getting tired of bouncing it. And like we showed you uh, previously, hey, somebody put in this handy little air valve. Check this out. This is a full on chuck. It means it's gonna give full air. So you need to connect it first. And then let's get the camera. This is the offending part. See what happens. Boom. Boom, shakalaka. That is a seated bead. Don't leave it on there too long. You don't want to blow it up. From here, you can see air still, there's still air trapped in here. Check this out. There's no valve, but air is still in. So it's coming out. So now you know you've got a really firm seed and now I'll tighten up my rim locks. These Motion Pros are a 12. Tighten them up. And that's basically, you tighten them about as tight as you can tighten them with a normal two fingers. Don't know exactly what that is, but I'll have to guess. You Europeans know what that was. 
Australians too. Mate. It's pretty good. We'll go to the other one. There's another one installed. This is ready for some hard enduro action. Get some. We make enduro.